Right, right. Why? Because of this relativism, this brutalism, and this narcissism that has just pounded on our people for all, all these many years. I, I, I especially look at that uh, brutalism. You know, the way that we gutted out uh, all signs of the sacred. Welcome to the Grace Force, everybody. This is the Grace Force podcast, and I'm here with my partner in crime, Doug Berry. We got a great show lined up today. Uh, we're going to actually build on the, the amazing show we had with Father Ripker last weekend. Uh, but we want to do what we always do first, and that's pray the St. Michael prayer, pray for protection, and pray that uh, all the saints and angel, angels are with us tonight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. St. Michael the Archangel, Good. defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruinous souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Doug, wow. <laughs> Last week with Mother Ripperger. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to just let you talk about this right now because, uh, I mean, we've been talking about it before the show, but... Uh, it's been amazing. Oh, the, the feedback has been, has been, I mean, phenomenal. We've been doing the show. This that was, that was episode 22. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, and along those lines, I, first I got to throw out to we father, we've had so much good support. So many, so oh, many yeah. the comments. I mean, in fact, father Ripperger show, I'm going to do a quick refresh on this. We were sitting at over 1,040 comments just in four, what, five days. Wow. Um, the feedback has been phenomenal from the people. Uh, big shout out to all the Patreon members. We've got yeah. people out there who've been supporting us and are contributing, you know, five dollars, ten dollars. We got a lot of five and ten dollar donors who are really supporting this, just helping us because we there can are I, can I ones. jump in real quick? Yeah, uh, people don't okay. know this, but uh there's there's a big team behind this podcast. I mean, oh, yeah. you have uh is it three uh, three of your sons uh, that are four. involved in this? Uh, four. four. I always yeah. lose count with all your kids. Uh, but four of your sons are involved, and right. another uh, guy that's our producer, and they work really hard to to make this great. And you're really oh, yeah. supporting uh, them and they're growing their families, their young families. And it's right. just amazing. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So if anybody's interested, wants to support us, we ask you to pray about it. We only want it to be done. If you feel like God's calling you, check out the link below Patreon and uh, you can go out there and get more information on it. But right. thank you everybody. And we pray for you. We do because you're, you're a big yes. part of this whole team, you're part of the, the grace force. Yeah. But, but yeah, father, last week's show with father, uh, Chad Ripperger was unbelievable. The feedback yeah. and, response and the help that it has been for so many people. That's it. And, you, and you've seen this. I know you, you've been hearing confessions from people. You've been having people request things. And I mean, some of the things you've been asked, like about, yeah, I've had, I've had people, for instance, Doug, um, afterwards, everybody came up to me in my parish and I, you know, I often go over to the 730 mass while the TLM's going on and I get into the box. Well, I decided this weekend to count 42. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know I'm in heaven. I feel like I get a grace every time uh, one of those comes. So I had 42, uh, you know, pounds of grace, but, uh, anyways, uh, uh, but I had a lot of people saying, you know, father, you know, what you're talking about, what father Ripperger is talking about, we need to be in a state of grace. And that really convicted me. And, and, and I knew that I wanted to be in that power again. And so a lot of people were coming and uh, wanted to go to confession during that time. So stuff like that. And the question, I'm getting emails and comments and texts and uh, people, and they're great questions. But, yeah. uh, but and, and that's something I think we want to address to, uh, on this show too, Doug, some of those questions as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Because it, just to build on it, because I mean, one hour or just under an hour with Father Ripker clearly isn't enough. And he, he did agree to come back on the show in the future. So uh, we'll get that done, God willing, down the road. But you're right. A lot of people asking questions, and the questions are serious questions. You know, they've, they've got everything from noises they're hearing in their homes to problems in their marriages to, I mean, I've right. got a couple of guys that I've been talking with down here who come to the Wednesday night workouts. I do down here in Tyler with the men. We do kind of a training, self-defense thing, church security, and all the whole nine yards. And guys are asking me questions about, hey, what, when Father Ripperger says this, or what do we do to really stop? How do we deal with this? And, of course, I know you have been asked, and I've, I've had some of these questions. You get more since you're the priest here. 
um, about binding prayers, you know? Right, right. A lot of questions. And I think especially people who, um, you know, they, they hear, you know, I can be praying binding prayers for my children because a lot of families, of, of course, are seeing their children. You know, the, the, the millennials are, are, you know, that's the nons, N-O-N-E-S, unfortunately. And they've been leaving the church. Uh, there's a, a great movement. We're going to get into that later in the show. Uh, in podcast, uh, to drive back, okay, especially uh, the, the millennials. But so many of people are saying, there's powerful ways to pray for my children because they are immersed in the world and, and they have disconnected from the divine life of God. And, and so we, you know, we actually re reached out to Father Ripperger and asked him, what is it specifically, uh, Father Ripperger, that you uh, recommend for these binding prayers? And he actually put, uh, uh, sent, here's the book that you need to get. And it's actually a book that he wrote. But it, it's, uh, what is it called here? It's the, and, uh, and we'll put it up right now. It's Deliverance Prayers for Use by the Laity uh, by Father Chad Ripiger. And it's got a ton of different prayers in there. And um, even for specific things you're praying uh, to, to deliver your children from, even your spouse, your friends and neighbors, your parish, you know, it's all in this, uh, in this book. And everybody, you're going to want to get this book. It's off, awesome. I actually have the one for priests. So, uh, and I just, I just, once he sent this to me, I ordered three copies right away because I just want to have it on hand in case it comes up, you know, with people, uh, parishioners and things like that. I want to be able to hand it off, but, uh, but get, get, get that book. Okay. So, so that's, that's the answer basically to that question. Doug, you said you've been doing some kind of deliverance prayers yourself. Is that right? For your, yeah, for your yeah. family? Yeah, quite some time ago, I, I did read through uh, some of Father Ripperger's material uh, on deliverance prayers, and there was a form of a deliverance prayer that I've been nice. using for my own wife and kids in my own home over your possessions, your finances, really anything that God has entrusted to your care that you have the authority right. over. And, and I, just, I want to establish this very clearly for any of the laymen out there, you, you husbands and fathers in particular. Now, ladies, you have power, spiritual authority over your children. You don't over your husband, but you do over your children. And Father Ripper made this clear last week. We men have spiritual authority over our wives and our children. That's a tremendous responsibility that we have to take seriously. So men, take charge of that and, and claim in prayer in the name of Jesus. I yes. claim that authority that God gives me. Uh, yep. Right. And that's part of one of the father Ripperger's binding prayers is that I, I claim that authority that God gives me as the spiritual yep. head of my home, my family, and then engage in it. And don't just pray these prayers. Like you're throwing mud at the wall, hoping it sticks, pray these prayers. Yeah. Like you mean it. I always say this to men. If someone kicked in your front door in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, right. anytime, and your family was threatened, men, how would you approach the bad guy? Would you come up timidly and tepidly and say, excuse me, Mr. Bad Guy, you're threatening my family. Would you please leave? You're making us all uncomfortable. Or would you go at him and say, get out of my house now, right? Or would you just right. physically start getting him out of your house? And so yeah. when we pray the binding prayers, we're going to the Lord himself. We're calling on the name of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus. We're calling on the intercession of Mary, Virgin Most Powerful, that particular title. And we're, we're, we're attacking these demons with the power of Jesus, only with the power of Jesus, never on our own. But we're taking it to the enemy because God has given us this position. And we have to have that attitude, especially in light of everything that is eroding and exploding and imploding all around us, Father. This, right. we, we as men in particular... And to you priests out there, I just encourage the priests that might be listening or watching, preach this from the pulpit. Tell your parishioners, I know you do, Father, tell your parishioners you have the authority over your own souls, men, you have the authority over your families, women over your right. children. I mean, Father, you preach this, I'm sure, from your pulpit, don't you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, and I think that word authority uh, waking a lot of people in the podcast last week. And I can almost hear them saying, you mean there's something I can do about this? You know, I, and, and I think for people, it gave them a lot of hope. And so they, yeah. that, then came all the questions. Okay. Okay. I, I see that you, that I have the authority. I can pray them for them and pray them basically back into the faith. So show me how to do that. You know, what, what are the prayers or what can I do uh, with that? You know? And so um, listen, Doug, there's a whole awakening going on in the church right now. We've felt helpless for far too long. Like, there's just nothing we can do about it. And, you know, I just have to 
wipe my hands and and uh, because it's beyond my power. Well, it's yeah. not. Uh, you've been given an, an authority. You, you, in fact, you've been given a responsibility. Uh, I, I remember Father Ribaker in, in the podcast talked about in the name of charity, love. You, you know, you need to be doing these things. But Doug, the the thing is, is that people just don't know that that's out there. That, that those things are possible. I, I want to, you know, if I can, I want to tell tell a quick story. It's one. Sure. It's it's a story about my my own awakening. But I'm going to make a long story short. Uh, I went out to Rome for three months for um, a sabbatical with two, uh, two of my best buddies from seminary. And uh, this was our 10-year anniversary. And uh, we, we, uh, we, it was awesome. It was a beautiful experience. But a few weeks after we were there, uh, we got a, a beautiful engraved invitation to go to a papal mass. This was John Paul II in 1998. And uh, they said, oh, you better go there two hours in advance or you're not going to get a seat. I said, I don't go two hours in advance for anything, even the Pope, you know. But, uh, and actually, you know, we took a chance and just went on a half hour in advance and they were right. Everything was gone. We had to stand in the back, but then an usher said, uh, saw us with like five minutes to go. And he did this, Doug, he, he, he gave us this signal. And so we, we followed, we went all the way up to the, to the rows where the Cardinals and bishops sat with the velvet kneelers and sat us there to this day. I don't know why, why that happened, but, um, and that's just kind of a fun backstory, but while we were there, all of a sudden, the sacred music started started to be sung and played, and it was just glorious. It was, it was it was like angels, and it was something I really had never heard before, especially on a Sunday in a parish setting. You know, uh, it, up until then, you know, eighty eight to ninety, it was my first ten years. You know, eat my body, drink my blood, and we'll sing a song of love. You know, uh, but and you know, I was doing I was doing you know um, a nightclub act up because. When the priest turned around to the people, he felt like he needed to be an entertainer, okay? And so I was up there, and there was this this uh, this uh, uh, way of doing the uh, Eucharist, uh, the um, uh, preface to the Eucharist prayer, uh, Father all powerful and ever living God, you know. And then the the pianist would go bling. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. It was a nightclub act. They should have put a tip jar on the on the on the piano or the, or the altar. <laughs> That's what we were doing back then. But we felt yeah. we needed to do that to get people engaged. Yeah. Now I'm seeing this. Then I see the beautiful precision of all the, all the, uh, the, uh, the servers and, and uh, the ministers that were there. And uh, just the glory of St. Peter's Basilica. And Doug, I, I just, I could, I could hardly breathe because it was just so awesome. And I, I thought, you know, God is here. Maybe as I've never felt it before. Okay, and then I then I had the sinking feeling that uh oh, you know what have I been doing up mm. until then? And so it changed me. It changed me. But I've come to understand, Doug, that what I experienced there was the uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit called fear of the Lord, or what's synonymous to that is on wonder. Okay, fear of the Lord in that context, the biblical context, is. I'm afraid. I love you so much, God, Papa, Father. I love you so much that I'm afraid of ever offending you. That's what fear of the Lord means biblically. And, and that's what you get to. You get to the place where all I want to do is please you. I just love you that much. You know, it's not like fear that he's going to get the belt out and beat you, right? No, it's it's fear that, that you're, you're going to displease him. And, I, and, and I've come to understand that that's the gateway gift to all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, is, is that when you get to that place, where, where you see it in the Bible, where they fall to his feet, when they get down on their knees, you know, and they humble themselves and they beg, please, Lord, please, Lord, I'm a sinful man, right? Uh, Peter, leave me, Lord, I'm a sinful man, right? Uh, it, but when you get to that place, now he can use you, okay? Because I'm not getting in the way, all right? I, it's, I'm not making it about me, you know? Father, all powerful, never living God. You know, look at me entertaining like Dean Martin, right? You know, no, it's about worshiping God. And that changed yeah. me in that moment. And so what happened, Doug, is that I moved from superficial yeah. to supernatural. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. More. Yeah. yeah. And so that happened on February 2nd, 1998. 1998. It was the Feast of the Presentation. Uh, years later, I came, I, I was going to give a talk to a bunch of men and I had, while I was gone, I, I got my Packer stock certificate in the mail and it was waiting for me when I got home. And so I thought it'd be a cute way to tell the story that I just told to show them the stock certificate. 
and I went on my wall and I took it off the wall and I'm going to show it to you right now. And I, it was, it was years later, maybe 10, 15 years later, I realized on the Packers stock certificate, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but February 2nd, 1998, the day I had my conversion is sitting on my Packers stock certificate. God is hilarious. <laughs> but Doug, this is the point is that there is a, a whole uh, rising and it's especially coming from young people. They, 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 they don't want this, um, you know, uh, uh, this, well, the superficial. superficial. They want, yeah. they want to rise up in, into the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. I, everything you just described, it's a moment where all of a sudden, boom, it's that metanoia. It's that, whoa. And the funny thing is that that's, that's not the sort of thing you can necessarily, you know, teach. It, it happens. No. It happens. It just it happens. happens. And, you know, it's, right. it's, it's, it's like a St. Paul moment, maybe, maybe not so dramatic to get knocked to the ground and have scales on your eyes, but there is a yeah, moment. Yeah, it's pretty dramatic at St. Peter's Basilica. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it was, yeah. But yeah. People, it can just be kind of a, all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, yeah. the light bulb goes on and you think, oh, I can't believe I, this is how I've been looking at these things. It's you, you go, know? wow, yeah. right? Wow. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, I think you, you can go through motions so much in life. You can check boxes. And I know a lot of people out there watching or listening might be realizing, yeah, we go through motions. We check boxes. We know we're supposed to. And, you know, it's the sort of thing where I always try to raise my kids with the, this, this one phrase is that you got to own it. You got to own the faith. Right. You know, but but there is truth. There's there's absolute unequivocal truth that cannot be be budged. It it simply is. God is truth. And and so many people who who seek to they try to find so many things out there in a superficial way. It's drugs, it's alcohol, it's gambling, it's pornography, it's running around, it's it's money, it's you know, get weird quick schemes, it's it's any of these things which have been going on from the beginning of time. And yet right. when we die. As the saying goes, there's no hearse or there's no uh, a U-Haul trailer attached to the back of your hearse. You don't take any of this with you. You know, you came into the world with nothing. You're leaving with nothing. You know, you're right. going to stand before God with only how you've lived, not what you've accumulated. Um, and so, but but to get to that point of realizing that that's the most important thing is to strive for that most important day of judgment with God. While we're here to try to you know recognize that that love that truth is there, but therein lies a lot of the battle, Father. You know this. You know right. You, preach about this we talk about it all the time you you put an article out i think that addresses a lot of this you put it out on uh, romancatholicman.com which great website people check that out romancatholicman.com it starts off it's a great it's it's the new revolution make jesus your personal trainer uh the right. chicken and the egg story by the way people i'm not going to tell you you got to go read the article chicken <laughs> and the egg story is a great story but you get into the three things relativism brutalism and narcissism and I think we got to get into that just a little bit here, at least, Father, before we run out of time in this segment. Is well, I, I think uh, is that something we're going to do in the next segment, or oh, are do we doing next now? Yeah, let's, well, we can do next yeah. segment. That's fine. Let's do. Let's do. Yeah, I think that's a that. great thing to open up because you yeah. know, let. I think we should look at specifically what has been the devil's game plan, especially in uh, killing off uh the faith of the people yeah. and and uh, like i yeah. like you have and you know, i've seen since uh, father ripperger's podcast but i've seen it through my, my my priesthood but especially in the last week is people are just so um uh concerned about their children and and by children uh, most of them are like in their 20s and 30s and things like that that have uh, have uh, fallen away from the faith and so let's look at what the devil did because you got to know what the enemy is doing in order to know how to defeat him. Right. So let's right. talk about that in the next segment. Hey, everyone. We're back. U.S. Grace Force podcast. Doug Berry here with my good friend from the Richard Heilman and segment two. Rise of the new supernatural revolution, Father. We we wrapped up a little bit there on that first segment, talking about just obviously the follow up to Father Ripperger, and then just things we're hearing the, the 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 enlightenment, of course, that you said you went through when you were over in Rome. But you know, in right. your article, I really I love this article because you keyed on three main things: relativism, brutalism, and narcissism, and how right. you know, this has been, as you've said, kind of the plan of the devil, really to kind of yep. move us into this mode. And I think I remember it was Pope Pius the tenth, Saint Pius the tenth, who said that modernism is the sum of all heresies that we've had this modernistic yeah. view and now we're into kind of a postmodernism, 
you know, where everything is just kind of anything goes. I see it's like one big coexist bumper sticker we're living in. I know it. Kind of defining moral relativism. You're good. I'm good. You can believe this. You can believe that. What's your idea of heaven? I don't know. What's your idea of heaven? Hey, you know what? I think it's this. Oh, I think it's this. Okay, I guess we're both good. And it's 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 insane. And it's dangerous. And it's destructive. You know. So I mean, yeah. The moral relativism, Father, is a huge problem. Yeah, and and in there too, I actually put up a picture of people at a buffet. You know, because what are they doing? They're picking and choosing. And the the they, the nickname for a lot of this is cafeteria Catholicism. And that's deemed okay for some reason that that you could you could be a Catholic, but you don't have to follow all of what the church teaches. You can pick and choose which ones you like and which ones you don't like. So pro-abortion politicians, you know, oh, I'm a Catholic and we should pray and all this stuff, but you're you're advocating the killing of of innocent children, uh, millions of innocent children, and that's called cafeteria Catholicism. It's called moral relativism. Is is what I believe is different than you, what you believe, and that's just okay, and it's not okay. And what's been happening too, Doug, is that um, you know those who actually do believe everything that the church teaches. Let me let me link that to that awe and wonder, or fear of the Lord. You know, fear is I, I fear ever displeasing you. So of course I believe everything that you have handed down to me through sacred scripture and sacred tradition. Okay, and I I. I here to it all, I love it all. But you know what you are if you are that? You're rigid, okay? And you're not open to the possibility of other kinds of truth, okay? Or other people's truth. And what that is too, and I pointed that out in the article, is that that kind of demeaning is uh, actually uh, um, poking fun at uh, people like that. That's, that's a Saul Alinsky tactic. You know, you try to marginalize people as extremists. I, I always say when I was in seminary, you know, guys that had a devotion to the Blessed Mother were usually kicked out because they were considered extremist and fanatic for having that devotion. Well, well that's when, going on in our time. And when you mentioned yeah. Saul, you mentioned Saul Alinsky, you know, for those out there, I mean, a lot of people are going to be familiar with him. He wrote that book, Rules for Radicals. You know, right. it's really, a, it, it's a, it's uh, I mean, it's a document for communism, socialism. I mean, it is, it is just right. And he dedicated the book to Lucifer. To Lucifer. I mean, yeah. The, the actual angel, the fallen yeah. de- demon, the devil himself, Lucifer. I mean, and, yeah. and you're right. And and the the mindset and ridicule is one of his big big tactics. Yeah. That he that he that he, that he tells people ridicule people that don't agree with you. And then, therefore, they're deemed as extreme or fanatical. Okay, so that's been going on, Doug, and, and that's a this is whole moral the dictatorship of moral relativism is just replete in our times. It is killing off faith because you know uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But but when when you it, uh, rise rise to the level of you know adhering to the eternal truth. Uh, come from God, uh, that's given to us divinely by God, uh, you know, that calls us to new heights. Uh, but, you know, but the, you talked about that eagle and the chicken story. Well, you, the, the bottom line of that story is that the, 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 the baby eagle who was raised by prairie chickens didn't realize he could just set his wings and start to fly yeah. like the eagles he, uh, he admired above him but was left to eat little bits of garbage with yeah. the rest of the prairie chickens. And he was and, and Doug, that's what we've been fed. And all the prairie chickens around the eagle are telling him, ah, you're just a chicken. You, you, right. You can't do what those, those, those glorious looking birds up there are doing. And, and, right. and, and that's the, you know, it's something that father. You're the, just a homo sapien. You're not it. a child of God. You're not a child of God. You know what? And that's exactly. You're a homo sapien. You're, and we, you're we just another to, animal species. That's it. You're, right? just, you're like the birds and the trees and the cows and anything else out there. Right. You, you're not, you're set not apart. special. You don't have the image yeah. and likeness of God written to d- divine right. life in your soul. You know, right. And, and, you know, and so just take care of the flesh. Just, just keep pecking at the garbage. Okay. The little bits of garbage. Yeah. The flesh, which which will fade away. It has its place. It's a temple of the Holy spirit, but it's still going to fade. And you know what? Think about this too, father is what, uh, uh, again, what father Ripperger mentioned last week. At one point he talked about running commentary. 
And again, for anybody who hasn't listened to this show, or I say you listen to it several times because there's a lot of meat and potatoes in this show. Yeah, a lot of people said they had to get a notebook and I watched it yeah, two and three oh, times. I, I, my, you know, me and my wife, we've had it running in the house probably three times just over the last yeah. week. And, and, you know, we were on it. So, <laughs> but what he says in there is that the, that the exorcists themselves, when they're dealing with exorcisms, that they find that people who are, who have opened themselves up to, you know, the world, flesh and devil, and I'm paraphrasing some of this here. Right, they, right. They get a running commentary from the enemy. So while yes. there may be this truth being delivered to them. Or you could call it a narrative, right? A That's narrative. what they call it, the political. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The narrative is constantly yep. going. And it's, it's the narrative or the running commentary of the dem of the demons of the world, right. the flesh. And it's the constant yep. narrative that the chickens gave that baby eagle. Is it? No, you can't exactly. do this. No, you're just this. So when the world right. says your, your value is dependent upon how many likes you get on Facebook or, or on an Instagram post or a Snapchat, a gramma, popularity, popularity, yeah. you know, or it's yeah. about your looks, look in the mirror. And if you look a certain yeah. way, then you're, then you've got worth and value, you know, but if you've got, if you're too tall, too short, too heavy, too thin, your hair's too thick, you have no hair at all, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, people say that determines your value. That is a that is one of the biggest lines of lies yeah. out there. The running yep. commentary telling us that, that we're we're not worth it, we're not valuable, and yet yep. our Lord's over here saying, "Truth, truth, truth. You are yep. precious. You are everything to me." Exactly. It's a demonic narrative that gets in fixed in us, and 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 as Father Ripperger said, it, it, we just can't get get it out, you know, and uh, we can get it out. Right. And it's called the power of supernatural grace. Right. And that's what we're talking about here, Doug, is that there is a way out. And we're going to talk about that in a second, too. But the second thing that we talked about, too, is uh, the, the big tactic of the devil, devil was actually something that's called brutalism, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So brutalism is actually a, a, a type of architecture that flourished from the 1950s to the mid-1970s. But what is it, Doug? It's a revolt. It's a direct revolt against beauty. And, and in the church, it was a revolt against sacred beauty. Okay, so, so what did we see during that time and, and, and in years following? Gutting out of churches, these beautiful churches. Doug, I have a church from 1980 or 1888 that was left untouched, partly because the, the people, while respecting the priest at the parish council in 1988, okay, when the priest wanted to gut the church out, they stood their ground and said, Father, no, please don't do this, okay? But that was what's going on. And now we have a church that is as beautiful as it was in 1888. And you know what, Doug? The, the youth, the young families, the, the people are starting their families, or you know, all these, you know what they're doing? They're flocking to this. Because why? Because they're, they're sick and tired of these churches that were gutted out and turned into conference centers. Uh, the, the one downtown in, uh, at St. Paul's, and it was just beautifully transformed by Father Eric Nielsen and everyone, uh, St. Paul's downtown. But it looked like a bomb shelter before that. It was just horrific, Doug. Uh, but that's what was going on in that time. And they took all the statuary out. You know, no, people want to go into a space and know that God's there. And, yeah. and, and this was a brutal, brutal assault to, again, take us away from being that eagle, that child of God, and to say, no, you're just a homo sapien. We're going to live in this brutal, brutal architecture. Right, Doug? Absolutely. And, and I, I would say, you know, many churches I've been in around the country, to walk into a church where you, you literally have to stop and look around and take, take several minutes even just to take in the beauty of the architecture, the design, the paintings, the stained glass windows, you know, and, and I want to throw a little comment here to something else that happened uh, with regards to the behavior in the sacred space. And I just put a post out uh, at the time we record this just a couple days ago on my Facebook page. And the post simply said, stop talking. And I was, and I yeah, said, yeah, I saw that. I said, look, look, after mass, there are people who actually pray. Prayers yeah, we just received God. God we just did. came into us. Yeah. And for at least 15 to 20 minutes, approximately, while the host is yeah. breaking down in the body, we yeah. have the presence of Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in our body. Now, I, look, I know most people don't know, so I don't mean this uncharitably, but we do need to get a little bolder about saying, look, you know, this is one of my news resolutions for 2020. Gloves are coming off. 
Okay. And I mean this in all charity, but enough of just dancing around, coexist bumper stick, political correctness, diplomacy, and overuse of the word pastoral. We have got I to know. realize the sacred space of the church really yes. demands a sense of reverence and silence. So yes. the people before, during, and after mass in yes. that body, in that sacred space can pray, keep the conversation yeah. silent, minimal. If you have to, like if your little kid says, I need to use the bathroom. Okay, here we go. Let's go. That's one thing. But when you're discussing what you're going to do after mass, oh, we're going to go out to Barbara's house and we're going to have some casserole. And look, that is not the place for that. Step out of the church. That's another thing I think that the brutalism has done to our time is it's turned even the behavior in the sacred space upside down to where you talk about a conference center or a conference hall. Yeah. That's we don't only really look, they don't even look like conference halls. We treat right. them like conference halls now. And right. it's, it, it, it's, it, we have to get back to the sense of beauty and the behavior that is beautiful. Sacred beauty, yeah. In the sacred space, yes. Yeah. And then the, and then the other thing, the other attack that, that uh, the devil's done in our times is, is narcissism. Well, that's just pride, you know, but, yeah. but it's, it's putting, it's making ourselves our own God. And this exploded in the 1960s with the sexual revolution. Doug, I want to share this, this quote that uh, I've used. If people who read my writings know that I use this quote over and over and over again, only because I think Jeffrey Cooner, who wrote it first in the Washington Times, hit it out of the park with this. So here it is. He, he wrote, for the past 50 years, every major institution has been captured by the radical secular left. The media, Hollywood, TV, universities, public schools, theater, and the, the arts, the literature, they relentlessly promote the false gods of sexual hedonism and the radical individualism. Conservatives have ceded the culture to the enemy. Tens of millions of unborn babies have been slaughtered. Illegitimacy rates have, have soared. Divorce has skyrocketed, skyrocketed. Pornography is rampant. Drug use has exploded. Sexual, tr sexually transmitted diseases such as AIDS has killed millions. Birth control is a way of life. Sex outside of wedlock has become the norm. Countless children have been permanently damaged, their innocence lost forever because of the proliferation of broken homes and sodomy and homosexuality, homosexuality are celebrated open, openly. Mer uh, America has become the new Babylon. All that in there, Doug, speaks yeah. to narcissism. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not about doing the right thing, the godly thing, the God way thing. It's about doing what feels good to me now, no matter what the consequences. Yeah. And, and, you know, in order for us to get to the point of being okay with a narcissistic way of living, we have to adopt the, the relativism view that God really doesn't care so much about these things anymore. You're okay with that. You don't have to feel guilty you know, if you if you want to cheat on your spouse, you don't have to feel guilty if you want to be addicted to porn because, you know, you're human. That's just natural. Or or if you're caught up in, you know, sexual promiscuity or, or masturbation or these things that are out there using birth control, you know, you know, we've made it so more rel morally relativistic that the narcissism can easily creep in and dominate now. And now you've got this this demonic narrative or this running commentary from the world, flesh and devil constantly now saying to us because we're We've opened the door. We've in, we, we're engaging in the in the behavior, and now we're just constantly fed the, the 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 line over and over again. This is good. You're fine. You're a chicken. You're not an eagle. You can't fly. Right. Just cut right. out with the idea thinking you could. You know. And right. so the, we we've got to realize that until we get back to the reality, of supernatural truth, unwavering, relentless, immovable supernatural truth, and God's design. We're, we're not going to we're not going to see the healing that we we could see. But I know the last segment, we're going to address more of that because there is yeah. that direction, you know. Yep. And, and, that's and let's take let's that. take that in the next segment, because, yeah. Doug, there's an exciting revolution going on. OK, I agree. and I we agree. need to get it on it. And, and we need we need all the bishops. We need all the men's groups. We need everybody to get on board because there's a supernatural re revolution that is rising and rising fast. And we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Welcome back everybody. Uh, you know, Doug, we've been talking about this uh, new supernatural revolution, yeah. and uh, we've been talking about kind of what's made us those uh, 
those uh, prairie chickens, you know, just pecking at garbage uh, <laughs> for so long and what the devil's been up to. Now we want to talk about what we need to do to fly like an eagle. Yeah. I want to start out by sharing this. Yeah, yep. I want to start out by uh, sharing this uh, pass, this very familiar passage from Isaiah. Okay. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I just love that, Doug. You know, and what it is, you know, you get that energy. You get yeah. that God spirit in you, and nothing can stop you. It just, you, you just bring it on, God. Tell me what you want me to do next. You know, I was talking about this recently too, Doug, about, you know, uh, in my homily, because I was picking up on what we talked about with Father Ripperger. But I said, you know, everybody, listen, if you can't get to me for confession, let me get to you. And here's why. Here's why. Because I know that when you're in a state of grace, that scripture passage about Jesus saying, my yoke is easy and my burden light begins to make sense. Because you just want to do the most that you can for the Lord. When you're not in a state of grace, okay, that that rosary weighs 500 pounds, okay? <laughs> It's doing anything for the Lord uh, that is not, you know, some kind of selfish concern or, you know, wanting to, you know, uh, material pleasures or monetary success or popularity. If it's not that, you don't want anything to do with it, you know, because you're why you're not in that state of grace. So, Doug, we need a new supernatural revolution. So we talked about relativism and well, brutalism yeah. and narcissism. And you know I, what the, 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 the go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you on your car. You people need to know <laughs> if they don't know this about you, you are serious as a heart attack. I'm serious about coming out to people to hear their confession. You have a car exactly. posted on Facebook, and we get the image up here. Um, this is your car. Yeah, <laughs> was it have grace will travel? Is that what it says on there? Yeah, no, it was uh, so, grace so, force delivery service. Force delivery service. That's, yeah, yeah, and Which then I said. Uh, can absolve will travel. That's it. That's it. And but the thing is, you've done this now. You've gone to people's yeah, oh, yeah. houses who've called you and said, I need confession. Yeah. I can't get over there. I got a sick child or whatever it may be. You actually go to their house and yeah. hear their confession. Yeah. I mean, I'm one parishioner that's taking care of her, her mom and, uh, and she, she called me and, and, and she, she has to stay with her mom and, uh, her, her aging mom. And, and, uh, and I go there and, uh, I had another person that was deathly sick, and I says, I'm coming over. And I, I drove up, and there was a built confessional on his front porch. <laughs> and so we, we went to confession there. But, you know, it's true, Doug. It, it, it's, we got to once again understand that there is such a thing as a supernatural power of God, the power of grace that puts us into paradise, okay, that puts us into the place of God's presence again uh, so that we can be, uh, we can fly, like we can soar like you. So we talked about, okay, let's, let's, let's break this down, relativism, okay? Right. Okay, first of all, I want to say that relativism, brutalism, narcissism, okay, the answer or the counter-revolution to those uh, it is truth, beauty, and goodness. These are called the transcendent, the uh, transcendentals. Okay, and these are the abs uh, the the universal absolutes of being. So, right? and so, so now when you're talking about relativism, all right, the counter revolution or the new revolution is truth. All right, so truth. We were talking about this earlier, but but this is knowing that there are essential truths of right and wrong, good and bad. That leads us to what? To aspire, to strive. Okay. I love, you know, we're talking football. And the, I'm talking about the Packers. I don't know about what anybody else is, but, you know, and I love Vince Lombardi, but I, uh, many of his great quotes, but he, he said once, he said, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we catch excellence. Doug, that's what gets us our hearts pounding. Yeah. When we want to strive to do the good, the right, the true things we soar like eagles in that trans and we transcend what the barbarity of being prayer chickens. Right, Doug? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, I mean, it, absolutely. The, the, uh, the struggle I, I find with people is 
you know, how did we first get to this point? And we describe a lot of that earlier in the show. Um, but if you ask them when, to their to their face, and I've had so many discussions with people for 30 years, 30 plus years about this, you have too, I'm sure, about what brought you to the point of not believing in the supernatural anymore. And, and right. sometimes regularly I hear back, well, I haven't seen anything that I can that I can identify with or that I define as being supernatural. Um, you know, they want to see something grand, something amazing. And, and I always say, you know, but, but what probably ruined your, your, well, I say this a lot, what probably ruined your impression or understanding of the supernatural can be the example you get from people around you. So, you know, and a lot, a lot will agree with that. Sure. You know, I've heard this, my dad this way, or my mom this way, or the people at school, or in, in these days and age, it's, it's what we're seeing out of the Vatican. You know, it's, it's really breaking people's faith. Okay, then I say, well, what about the example of the people around you that are believing right. in the supernatural, that do acknowledge right. it, that, that live those day-to-day -day lives? Right. And in the times we're in right now, Father, look, as hard as it's getting in so many areas with the, the brutalism, the narcissism, and you know the moral relativism, the fact that we see people out there who are living for truth, beauty, and goodness in the right. face of so much that tries to beat them down should right. be even more of an example of the supernatural working in everyday people around us. I mean, does that, right. does that make sense to you? Do you think that rings true? Yeah. You know what I'm thinking about now too, is this one of the most awesome things about our, our podcast with Father Ripperger last week was just the profound understanding that people who are being disturbed by demonic activity or just depression or whatever is going on in their life. Right. Uh, Father Ripperger said, I think he said 90, 90%, 99% of, of those that are coming to him are out of the practice of the faith. Yeah. Okay. And, and just getting them back in the practice of the faith cures most of that, you know? Um, and, and, but what are we saying there? Again, it's supernatural because <clears throat> what is the practice of the faith? It's going to confession. Okay. To purify, detox yourself of all your sins, to ready yourself to receive what? A power, a power from God. The, the power of grace, okay? Now you're prepared to come and receive God in the Holy Eucharist. And what are we seeing too? More people that are doing adoration, you know? The world looks at that and goes, you're kneeling before a cookie. What's going on? No, that is God. And I believe that's God. I believe in the real presence. We're going through a time right now, aren't we, Doug, where 70%, the new statistic came out, don't believe that that's God in the Holy Eucharist anymore. Of baptized Catholics, right. you know, and this isn't you know all of the world or all of Christendom. This is just Catholics, right? Right. Why? Because of this relativism, this brutalism, and this narcissism that has just pounded on our people for all all these many years. And I I especially look at that uh, brutalism. You know the way that we gutted out. Uh, all signs of the sacred, you know, whether well, it's sacred architecture, art, music, uh, liturgy, uh, has been has been stripped out. And so, why believe, right? Well, and, and there's there's a famous saying: the advertising agencies use it all the time. If it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Right, it's in right. Sight, it's in mind. So, I mean, what a plan of the devil! What an absolute powerful plan of the devil to remove from our senses. You know, the, the, the right. smell of incense, the sound of sacred music. Right. There's nobody right. who can dispute that music affects us on a very deep level. You know, when I work yep. out, I, when I'm lifting weights or working out, I'm not listening to, to, you know, the same stuff I listen to when I'm trying to relax to go to bed at night. I'm listening to stuff yeah. that's, that's going to fire me up. Now, it's all mainly instrumental stuff, and it's upbeat. It might even be classical sure. upbeat, but it's upbeat. So music affects us, you know, and, you know, right. when, when, when we're at a movie, and you're watching a scary movie. If you think about the music, if you if you change the music and play a circus tune, bah, 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 da, 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 you know that kind of song. While someone is being you know you know pursued by the alien or whatever it is, it right. know, turns into a comedy. So music right. affects us. So the sounds, the sights, when you take the beauty away from exactly, the vision, this affects us interiorly. So we have yep. to bring those images back. The beauty, the sacred sound, beauty, the sight, all of it. Yep. Sacred beauty is the counter of brutalism. And, you know, I was, I was saying too, that um, I wrote this not too long ago, but I've come to understand that the very essence of my priesthood is to get people to a place where they can cry out, 
my Lord and my God. Yeah. Okay. And so I want to offer the most reverent mass possible. I want to help those servers to understand that their precision, okay, like soldiers, helps people pray, yes. helps people understand that this is important, that this is God. I want to help, I, I want to tell that choir that's just so beautiful on Sunday mornings, doing this amazing sacred music, that you're moving me to tears, okay? Not so much because you're so beautiful, but because you're reminding me that we are in the presence of God here. We are in a holy temple. We were worshiping God. See, Doug, all of this sacred beauty matters, and it pulls us out of that brutalism that wants to call us just prairie chickens, and instead it elevates our game, and we soar like eagles as children of God. You know, Father, I would add on top of that, too, just the way we behave to one another, the language, the right. tone of voice. If you notice yes. how, you know, even the comment section in social media has gotten so bad, you know, we'll I know. say- I won't even go on Twitter. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I just, I, I, I post things on Facebook and it, it carries over to Twitter, but I, I never respond to any of these things. I hardly ever respond to comments. Yeah. And it's not because I don't appreciate the good comments. I just want people who comment to know that it's normally because I'm just really busy, but also, you know what? Mother Angelica gave me some really good advice years ago. I had a really great conversation with her years ago, and she said, honey, you know how she talked, honey, <laughs> just give him Jesus, right? She said, honey, uh -huh. I practice the dew drop theory. I said, what's the dew drop theory? She said, I do it and I drop it, right? So nice. when it comes to social media, yeah, I put the post out there because I want to encourage people, make people maybe laugh a little, have, you know, be, be fired up about something, reveal something that's going on in the world we need to know about. But comment sections can become very brutal. We know that. Well, even the way we speak to each other in public, you know, we cut each other off on the road. We got road rage issues, all of this. I even know. brothers and sisters and in the family, sometimes tone of voice really matters so if we want to raise the game and be the eagles that soar and understand beauty or understand uh, truth beauty and goodness the way we communicate with one another that yeah, we really absolutely. recognize the reverence towards the other person because christ is in that other person you know right. so dare dare we remember what you do to the least of my brothers you do unto me yeah. Very important words and, to understand truth, beauty, and goodness in our communication with one another. Yep. Yeah. And you very uh, did a very good job into moving into the third trans, uh, transcendental, which is goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, th that's we we need just to be good to each other. That's what you're saying, yeah. uh, and yeah. it's so true. But but uh, you know, w one of my favorite uh, lines from Sacred Scripture was uh, from I share a birthday with John the Baptist, June 24th. You know, he's the only right. saint that. We actually yeah. offer uh, uh, we uh, offer his birthday into the world rather than into eternal life. We uh, do that one too. But anyway, good for you, Father. So, That's but, awesome. But he said, "He must increase, I must decrease." That's what you're talking about, right there, Doug. Yeah, is that's that it. is what when you're talking about goodness, you're, you're you're talking about you matter more than I do, and I need Christ to increase in me so much. And and, and so, what is this the counter to? narcissism right yeah. i gotta decrease it can't be all about me it can't be all about my rights and my feelings and my wants and my desires and my lusts and all this stuff it's not about that it's about making a difference in the world it's about taking christ the power of grace and moving out okay i'm going in is the expression that i always like to use that's that battle cry when they stand up they get out of the foxhole and they get onto the battlefield i'm going in you know uh, and that's what Christ is calling us to do, is to be that light, to spread it, to go out. And how do you spread it? Exactly what you talked about, Doug. It's the goodness that we share with others. It's the way that we care for them. It's the way that we put them ahead of ourselves. It's the way that we are, are so attentive to people's needs. And, and I, I wrote this in the article. I said, in my 32 years of priesthood, I can attest to the fact that it is the truly devout Catholics who can't not... <laughs> take care of need when they see it. Like the Good Samaritan, they simply find no excuse to walk by someone needing to be lifted up or to dedicate themselves to a cause. And th this is where I want to share that, that quote from, uh, from Vince Lombardi. And in truth, I've never known a man worth his salt who in the long run, deep down in his heart, didn't appreciate the grind, the discipline. 
there is something a good man that really yearns for discipline, the harsh reality of ed ad combat. I don't say these things because I believe in the brute nature of men or that men must be brutalized to be combative. I believe in God and I believe in human decency, but I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, the, his greatest fulfillment of all he holds dear is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle victorious. This is a guy that went to mass every day, Doug, and he, he, he went deep. He, he, he tuned in. He knows what it's all about and, and what it needs, what it means to be carrying that supernatural power of grace and moving out and do and making the world a better place. Well, right? and his and his own players would even say that they learned more about family and faith and foot than right. football from him, because he he just he he exuded that in, in a way he lived. Right. Um, and I right. I would recommend encourage people you know as we start getting close to the end of our show here, Father, anybody listening or watching, to really take an inventory of your life, the things around you, the people around you. And just ask the question, how am I investing in the people and the things around me to elevate everything, to be that eagle that soars for the glory of God, to really bring peace and goodness and, and, and truth to the world, to be an example and a witness to that. And, and it starts with, you know, Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa would always say, you know, it starts in the home and the family. You know, it starts first in my own heart. I have to recognize it. I have to be open to God's grace. I have to be in the state of grace. I have to live that way. And then from there, I got to reach out to the people around me. So anybody right. out there, especially those of you in families, you know, be that. Be that example to other people of what truth, beauty, and goodness is. I mean, that, that's how we really fight this fight. Because if there's anything the devil despises, it's, it's really it, it, when we're just coming out of ourselves for the sake of others, for the sake of the Lord. And, you know, there's a... There was an exorcism that took place, and I, before I get into the details, I won't do it right now because we don't have time, but just go real quick. It's exorcism 1978, and the recording of the exorcism, there's a priest who um, is in the exorcism is, is damned, and he is speaking through this woman um, and by the authority of the Blessed Mother in particular, sends or tells him to speak out on, on what his decisions were and how they work in hell, how they work to destroy souls in this world. And one of the things he says is this, like the fiber or the thread of a piece of cloth, we start with one fiber and we try to move through all the fibers, all the threads of the entire piece. But it begins with even just one. So right. really, when we sometimes reduce our our situation to, well, it's just a venial sin. It's not that big a deal. Well, so I was rude to that person. Not that big a deal. Yeah, so what if I was selfish here? Not that big a deal. It wasn't a big issue. It wasn't a mortal sin. This, this, this damned soul says we'll take any fiber you give us and we'll start working with that until we consume it all. So we do need to watch the little things, you know, not scrupulously, of course, but watch the little things so much so that we pay attention to, to really every, every opportunity we have and look at it as an opportunity to really be a witness to these things, to make right. a difference, because this battle right. is intense and we need, to be, we need to be a force to be reckoned with, the po mighty power right. of God, as you always say, Father. Yep. You know, and, and, and realize, too, and this, this is a, at least I think where both of us are coming from, Doug, is that this strength, this desire, this uh, zeal to want to soar like an eagle ain't going to happen until you tap into the power of grace, right. okay? And so be devout. Uh, uh, you, uh, go to Mass when you're supposed to, uh, the Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation, but go to confession often, okay? Th that means no more than a month apart. Because what happens is, is that all those venial sins start wearing you down, and now you're prone for the for the moral sin. In, in other words, you become more easily manipulated by the devil. You become more easily manipulated by all of the evil and the lies that are going on in the culture. OK, but if you've got grace on you, you've got an energy and, and, and you want to soar like an eagle and you want to do it God's way and you want to dig into his missions and you want to pray like it like it means everything. Uh, all of that becomes something that that it just fills your spirit with with uh, 
with uh, uh, intoxication, okay, of that of that Holy Spirit, uh, so that you 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 want nothing more than to please God. So that's what that fear of the Lord is. I, I fear, I love you so much, God. I fear ever wanting to disappoint you. So set me on your missions. Help me to be with you in prayer. You know, right, right. help me to, to treat my neighbor the best I can. You know, and, and let me be that light to the world that inspires others to want what I found in you. Right. Yeah, you know, Father, one of the things that really struck me last week with Father Ripperger statements, some several things that he said really struck me, really stayed with me. But one of them is this. The number one portal or doorway point of entry to the devil is a mortal sin, any mortal sin. As, exactly. And then he said, when we commit a mortal sin, technically we place ourselves under the authority of the devil. Of I mean, the devil. That just sounds really, really nasty to technically to place yourself under the authority of the devil by yeah. committing a mortal sin. So the worst thing in the world we could ever do, commit a mortal sin. The second worst thing we can ever do is commit a venial sin. Because venial sins, like you said, they weaken us. They build up, they weaken us, and makes us far more likely to fall into something more grave. That's the idea behind the thread, I think, that that, that priest, that, that, yep. that poor soul damned in hell said, you give us a fiber. That's like a venial sin. We get enough of those. You get weakened. It weakens charity. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of us out there, don't take even venial sin lightly. Be ready for the fight. Train hard. Prayer, sacraments fasting scripture, you know, uh, scapular. Yeah. Scapular. I was going to get into a bunch of the, the sacramentals, uh, in this show, but I want to save it for another show, Doug, but sure. that's why I look like a Bishop today with my, uh, <laughs> my medals hanging out. I think I'll put them in my pocket. So I look there like a go. Bishop. That's over it. Here. There you go. But uh, anyway, uh, but, uh, we're, we're running out of time here and I just want to say, uh, this has been an amazing run these two weeks, Doug. And, uh, I, I I really hope strikes a chord with a lot of people and that we just get more and more people that want to be about, about this new supernatural revolution yeah. because I don't want to be uh, a prairie chicken anymore. In, no. in, in, I want to be a, I want to soar like an eagle. Yeah, and so what, what's going chicken. on next? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on next week, Doug? Can yeah, you tell this us? is great. We have next week, we're going to have the the very popular and just wonderful warrior on the front lines for life. Father Frank Pavone is going to be our yes. guest next week. So we are thrilled very much to have him on. So yeah. everybody who's listening, watching now, don't, don't forget to tune in next week and spread the word and share this video with others. Get the word out. And Father Ripperger, the episode from last week, get it out to more people, more right. souls can be affected positively and powerfully if we continue to get this word out and we need to do it like it's a fight for our lives because it really is, especially for the spiritual life. That's right. All right, let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. They shall mount up with wings as eagles in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great being with you, Doug. God you bless too, you. Father. God bless everyone. God bless.